My childhood TV crush is organizing an event at public libraries across the United States, and your library needs to get ready for it, especially in terms of promotions. We're going to talk about that in this episode of the Library Marketing Show. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Angela Hirsch, and I'm the person behind the blog, superlibrarymarketing.com. You can head there and look for the Library Marketing Show tab to suggest a topic or ask a question for a future episode, or to nominate your library or another doing great work in library marketing for our kudos award, which we're going to give away a little later in the show. First, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so so that you can get notified when a new episode is released. If you're watching on LinkedIn, click on that follow button for the same notification. And if you find these videos helpful, useful, inspiring, scary, whatever, give it a thumbs up so that we know what your reaction to them is. I read about this event coming up in Book Riot, and I'm just going to say right now that I'm going to put a link to this article down in the show description if you're watching on YouTube or in the comments if you're watching on LinkedIn. But it has become, um, we've all become aware of an event that Kirk Cameron, the former child star of Growing Pains, is organizing. It's going to happen on August 5th, and it's going to be, he hopes, in public libraries across the United States. And basically what he's asking his followers to do is to call libraries and book a meeting room to have a story time or to just be able to ask for a story time within the library building on that day. And then folks are going to show up from his group and they're going to pray and sing and read some of the books that um, they believe kids should hear, which may not be as inclusive as we would like them to be in a public library space. So I think the whole reason that Kirk is doing this, he's gotten a lot of um, traction in the right-wing media and in the conservative world for his views on books and book banning. And we know that libraries are inclusive places. So this can be a little scary to you and maybe to your staff, especially if we're like in the middle of summer reading. Like, hey, Kirk, we got enough going on right now, but I'm pretty sure that's why he's doing it now. So let's talk about what your library can do marketing wise to get ready for this event. The first thing you're gonna do is check your policies. You should have a meeting room policy. I'm sure that you do. And you should have a policy that explains to the public the difference between a library-sponsored event and an event that you allow another group to hold in your space. And make sure those policies are clear. And then start now, today, educating your community about the difference in those policies. We don't often market or promote our library policies. And I think we should do more of it. I don't think the wider public, well, I know for certain the wider public is not aware of what policies we have or how the library operates behind the scenes. So it's really good to work promotions of your policies into your regular editorial calendar to educate your community about what you can say yes to and what you cannot say yes to. Many of you have a meeting room policy and you will likely um, say yes to Kirk and his followers to have a meeting room to hold your story time. Ahead of that, you may also want to review your standards of library behavior policy to ensure that everybody is adhering to that. Um, not just Kirk's group, but to people who may know his group is coming to your library and who may act out in ways that are not conducive to our inclusive nature in our libraries. So make sure your policies are airtight and ready to go and that you start now a couple months ahead of time educating your community about what your policies are. I would also work into your summer reading schedule and promotions the a message. Um, and you can do whatever kind of wording is feels natural for you and your library within your community, but something along the nature of how, why inclusive reading and diverse reading and inclusive spaces are important to a library community. You're going to want to figure out a way to say that a lot more conversationally, but I would start working that wording into as many of your library promotions as you can. Your social media posts, your digital signs, and your email newsletters, um, maybe in a sign that you put next to a high traffic area in your library. You're just going to start 
getting your community to understand that this is an inclusive space and all are welcome here, which is not exactly what Kirk's group preaches, pun intended. Um, so we're going to kind of counter that with our own, hey, everybody is allowed to have their say and have their space, but we are a place that is inclusive of all languages, religions, and, and people. Um, and then you might want to think about having a couple of talking points ready for the day that the story time happens. If your library happens to be a place where they book a meeting room, you want to have maybe three lines that you can deploy if need be on social media to the media, to whomever, to someone who may call your library to express concern that you've allowed Kirk's group to come in and use the meeting room. You're going to have three lines that explains very clearly, here's the policy. And in like one line, like if you had to do an elevator pitch for your meeting room policy, here's what our library stands for. So your mission, vision, and values in a very clear and succinct way. And here is what our library's approach is to diverse and inclusive reading and spaces. So that's my suggestion. Tighten your policies. Um, start educating your community about inclusive and diverse reading and get your talking points ready for that day just in case you need them. Hopefully you don't, but if you do, you'll be ready and prepared so you won't be caught off guard. I know this is can seem scary. That's the whole point. And let's not let that group make us nervous. For me, getting nervous, the best thing to do to relieve that pressure is to get prepared. So that was my hope in creating this episode, and I hope that's helpful to you. We can start a conversation about this. Has your library been targeted by a group like Kirk's or another group of this nature? And what are you doing this summer around book challenges and book bans to educate your community? You're getting a lot of traffic in the summer. This is a really great time to talk about the great way your library provides information and access to everyone in your community. I'd love to start a conversation. Let's do that down in the comments. Okay, on a much lighter subject, a wonderful kudos today. And it, it's for something that is like so simple. You probably will be surprised that I'm calling this out, but I wanted to, because it's just so extraordinary and very effective. So kudos today is going to go to the Liberty Public Library in New York. I'm going to put a link down uh, in the description on YouTube or the comments on LinkedIn so you can see the homepage of their website. And here's what I think they're doing is that's so amazing. In the top right-hand corner of their website, they have a big red button that says, very simply, sign up for library news. So simple, but I cannot tell you the number of times I head to a library website because I love looking at library websites. I know, nerdy thing to say, but I have a really difficult time finding the sign up for library news on many library websites. This is like the first place a person's eye looks because what what's the thing that most people do when they go to your website? They're going to search for something. They're probably looking for a piece of information. And your search box for most libraries is in the upper right-hand corner. This button is right on top of that. And my eye went right to it. And it's so simple, but I think it's so amazing. Kudos to you, Liberty Public Library, for creating your website in a way that can get people to sign up for your newsletter, because that's what we want. That's it for this episode of the Library Marketing Show. But my channel has lots of other tips for library marketing. If you want to keep learning, click on the next video, and I'll see you there.